Father, omnipotent and eternal God, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Adorable Jesus, we give you praise. Compassionate Jesus, we give you praise. Lovable Jesus, we give you praise. Sweet Jesus, we give you praise. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for saving us into all eternity. We give you praise for the gift of life this morning. We are alive and therefore we say we thank you. We bless your holy name. All believers all over the world, we say we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your power that sustains and gives life and direct our lives into your destiny. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Today also come and take the lead. Power and dominion belongs to you, almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of power, spirit of power, spirit of excellency, spirit of discernment, spirit of understanding. Jesus, take control by your Holy Spirit. Even as we speak, may your power and authority guide and lead us into all righteousness in Jesus' mighty name. I sanctify the hearings of each and every one in the spirit of the Holy Spirit right now for insight and divine understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Bless you, people of God. Today also is a wonderful day and we are coming to hear the word of God. Amen. The topic for today is put on the new self. Put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Amen. So we are taking our Bible reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. It says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll be going back to Ephesians 4 and read from the verse 17 and Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 10. We'll be reading all these Bible verses. So I want us to start. Hallelujah. Put on the new self. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Put on the new self. This is the joy of the Lord that we put on our new self created to be like God in holiness and righteousness, in righteousness and in holiness. Hallelujah. This is the joy that human beings like us, filthy people like us, sinners like us, will put on the new self created to be like God in true holiness and righteousness. This is a privilege. It's never a right, but it's a privilege to enjoy the newness of Christ in us. Hallelujah. So, your, your new self is your regenerated true nature in Christ Jesus. Your new self is what? Your true regenerated self in Christ Jesus. This is your true nature, which we have lost because of the, uh, the fall of Adam and Eve. But now, it has been regenerated, which is our true nature in Christ Jesus. For as many of you that has been baptized into Christ have put in on Christ Jesus. And therefore, we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we have put in on Christ Jesus, which is who is our newness of life in true holiness and righteousness. Hallelujah. To put on your new self is to be renewed in knowledge. Renew in knowledge in the image of its creator. Hallelujah. So to put on the newness of life created to be like God in true holiness and righteousness is to do what? Is to renew our knowledge in the image of Jesus Christ, the creator of heaven and earth. We had some kind of mindset in the world before we were employed, before we were converted, before we were given kingdom citizens, uh, citizenship in Christ. We had this mindset, but now we have the knowledge in Christ to become like him. Praise the living God. To put, on, <clears throat> to put on your new self is to clothe yourself with compassion, 
to clothe yourself with kindness, to clothe yourself with what? humility, gentleness, and patience. To put on your new self is to forgive one another in the Lord as the Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven you. Hallelujah. This is to put on your new self. The things I'm mentioning, they were not in our life, in our, in our previous lives. Our life that we lived in the flesh, we don't have forgiveness. We don't have compassion. We don't have humility. We don't have gentleness. We don't have patience. All these qualities we don't have. We act according to the emotions we have at that time. Hallelujah. But our newness in Christ Jesus made it possible that we can have patience. We can have peace. We can have forgiveness of sins. We can be what? Kind. Hallelujah. So to put on your new self is to forgive one another in the Lord Jesus Christ. To put on your new self is to respond to the Holy Spirit what? prompting. Praise the living God. So putting on your new self is also not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. This is made possible by the knowledge we have in the Lord Jesus Christ because we have put it on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the newness of our life. We are because he is. For the life that we live in the flesh, we live for the, for the son of the living God. For we were dead in our transgressions. Now he has resurrected us to live a newness of life. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. So, to put on your newness of life is to put on Christ Jesus and to operate in the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. This is awesome. This is a privilege we don't have before. This is a privilege and blessings we, are, we, we have never thought of before. But to put on the newness of Christ is to put on the spirit of wisdom and understanding. To operate in the spirit of cancer and of power. To operate in the spirit of knowledge. And to give God the, the holy reverend. Give God the holy reverend. Give God um, a, a sincere fear. Which is what? A highest respect for the creator of heaven. Hallelujah. And to delight in the word of the law. To delight in the law of God. To delight in the heart. In the promises of Jesus Christ. That is all putting on the newness of life. Putting on your new self created to be like God in true holiness and righteousness. My brothers and sisters. This is our true nature. The image of God in us before the fall of Adam and Eve. And it is now restored by Jesus Christ of Nazareth through the cross of Calvary. And by his resurrection, he made everything perfect. He made everything mature. That human beings, when believed in him, when trusted in him, will become like him. Through the sanctifying spirit, which is the blessed Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bible to Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. He says, And have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of the Creator. Hallelujah. So, we who have been raised with Christ, if we have been raised with Christ, those who are those who have been raised with Christ have put on the newness of Christ. They set their mind and their heart on things above where Christ is seated at his rightful position as God Almighty. Hallelujah. So, putting on the newness, um, the new lifestyle is to have what? Have Christ in you and to put your mind on the things that is above. The thing that is above the earth. The thing that is above desires of the flesh. To put your mind uh, on heavenly things where Christ is seated at his rightful position as God Almighty. Praise the Lord. So this morning, we are raising our moral standard. We are raising our consciousness to put on the newness of life that is found in Christ Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, to be renewed in mind, to put on the new self created to be like God in true holiness is to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot, by our own accord, by our own struggling, we cannot. So, he made everything possible and he presented himself to us as a holy garment, as a righteous garment. So, we should wear it. It is our responsibility to remain in that holiness and righteousness that he has given unto us. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. So, this is your duty. We have been saved by grace 
through faith in the finished work of God in Christ Jesus. That is the truth. And after that, we are set apart to do good works for hand. Hallelujah. Because God handiwork work good things, which is the righteousness that we have to demonstrate to show that indeed we are putting on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. So when you are redeemed and when you are saved, it doesn't save you from your, resp your responsibility and duty as a child of God in his kingdom. Amen. So saved by grace does not abolish your responsibility. Amen. But it gives you the power to what? To, to do your responsibility and your duty very well as a new created person in Christ Jesus. Amen. Ephesians 4. Um, Ephesians 4 verse 17 going. Amen. Ephesians 4 verse 17. The question here is that from Ephesians 4 from uh, verse 16, uh, 1 to 16, it makes a comparison, a harmonious comparison uh, between our old life and our new life. When we, you and me, everyone, every Christian, every believer were in the world, we, we lived a life. We submit to some practices. We did certain evil things that was normal in the world. So the, the, it makes a comparison between that old life and the new life that is found in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the question is, how can we put on our new self created to be like Christ in true holiness and righteousness? How can we do that? I've mentioned putting on the new self, what it's like to put on the new self. I mentioned those things. Yes, they are good, they are marvelous, they are awesome. But how do you do it? Since in your life, you have, you have the old practices, you have the, uh, the old one, lifestyle. So how do you do that? Amen? And how is this thinking of the old lifestyle, how is it like? This is what we are coming to look here. Amen? <coughs> So Ephesians 4 verse 17, it says, So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord. This is Apostle Paul speaking. I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord. It means it's very, very important. <clears throat> it's very, very important that you must no longer live as the Gentile do. You must not live like an unbeliever. You must not live as if you are living uh, the, the old lifestyle. When we were in the world, when you were in the world, you, you lived a lifestyle. Do not live this lifestyle again. And Apostle Paul says that he insists on it, that you don't live like an unbeliever. <clears throat> Amen? An unbeliever is called unrighteousness. It's called wickedness. It's called what? the devil. Because they don't have Christ in them. Because the spirit of the devil operated in them. You are not like that. You have now received the spirit of Christ. Therefore, God lives in you. So do not uh, live your life like someone who does not have the law of God. The writings of God. The promises of God. The counsel of God. That leads, that guide, that counsel, that rebuke, that correct you into all righteousness. Do not live your life like somebody who doesn't have all these Lost. Amen. It continue. No, no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the futility of their thinking. Hallelujah. In the futility of their thinking. You have to understand that word. What it means. Futility. Futility means vanity. Useless. Uselessness. Unproductiveness. Amen. Unfruitfulness. So you don't live as a believer, as a Christian, or somebody who has put you on Christ, who is in Christ, you don't live in the futility of your mind, of your think, your thinking. You don't live in vanity uh, mindset. You don't live in vain promises. You don't live in void. You don't live in unproductiveness. This, this lifestyle belongs to the former way of life. Amen? All they are thinking is to satisfy the desires of the flesh. You don't live like that when you are putting on the new self created to be like God in true holiness and righteousness. This lifestyle belongs to the past. As a believer, you are not like that. You have now Christ in you. Amen. 
So this should be the distinction between a believer and unbeliever. Hallelujah. So if you are a believer and you see some of the old practices working very fine in you, then you must change your mind from the futility of your thinking. Hallelujah. It continues. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of ignorance. Praise the living God. They are darkened or blind in their understanding because they don't believe in the word of truth. The word of truth that transform human being. I am transformed. You are a believer. You are transformed. Why? Because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that he's a son of the living God. We believe in the good news he brought to save mankind, to set people free, to set the afflicted free, to set the blind free, to set the captive free, and to bestow glory on people who do not have glory from the beginning. Hallelujah. So they don't believe in this gospel that transformed people from the dirty mind and from wickedness. They don't believe that. For that reason, for that reason, they, they, um, for that reason, they have hardened their heart. They have hardened their heart. They don't receive the gospel, so they have hardened their heart. Amen? So anyone who hardened their heart, they lost all sensitivity. If the gospel is being preached, the word of God I'm preaching right now, I'm preaching against old lifestyle. As a believer, don't have old lifestyle in you. So if you have old lifestyle, this message is speaking about don't live in old star, old lifestyle. So when you harden your heart, when you close your ears on the word of truth, on the word of power that transform, then you have hardened your heart. Praise the living God. And when you harden your heart, you give yourself into what? Sensitivity. You give yourself into what? Sensitivity. Praise the living God. And when you give yourself to sensitivity, what happened? You give themselves over to sensuality. Praise the living God. You see, when you do not accept the word of truth, then you are no more in Christ. If you don't allow yourself for the spirit of power to transform you inwardly and outwardly, you are not in Christ. Maybe you are called a Christian. That is a, that is a name. That is a title. But are you living that Christ likeness? If not, then believe me, Christ doesn't know you. You can have a title as a Christian, but you are not that Christ representative on earth. You are not that Christ because to put on your new self is to put on Christ Jesus and demonstrate the quality and the character and the goodness and the power of Christ in your life. Praise the Lord. So when you read um, uh, Matthew 7 verse 21, he said, not all who call me Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom of God. All those who enter into heaven are those who hear his word and obey them. So when you call yourself a Christian, you does not uh, believe and obey the word of Jesus Christ, then you are only a titled Christian and you will not enter into the kingdom of God. You might assume that you are saved by grace, but the word of Jesus Christ that only those who hear his voice, obey his word, will enter and see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Okay. They have been hardened, they have hardened their heart. The truth of the gospel is being preached, but some will still argue with it. Amen. They will harden their heart in disbelief and ignorance and ignorance. The verse 19. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality. What does this sensitivity mean? The word sensitivity means they have, they have lost uh, awareness of themselves. They lost awareness of themselves. If the gospel of peace comes, the gospel of salvation comes, and you harden your heart, you are blind to the word of God, you are ignorant of the word, uh, the, the word of God, then you are cold towards the word of God. You lack awareness. Amen? You lack responsiveness. You lack concern for your soul and for your being. Hallelujah. Towards the word of God that is being preached. Because it is the word that transforms. It is the word of Jesus Christ that transforms life. 
It is the, the obedience of the word of Jesus Christ that transforms life. And now the word is being preached and you are not responding to it. You are not giving any consent to it. You are called towards it. You have closed ear towards, uh, uh, towards that word. How can you be transformed? My life is transformed out of the obedience of some word of God. Amen? Anywhere there is a transformation in a man's life, in a woman's life, is because they have, re they have obeyed the word of truth. So it's the word of truth that transforms you into what? The glory of Christ Jesus. Amen? Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality. As so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they, and they are full of greed. What, what does the word sensuality mean? It means enjoyment. So when you are ignorant about the word of God, when you have close ear on the word of God, then you have given yourself to enjoyment. You have given yourself to pursuit of physical things, especially sexual pleasures of all kinds, sexual pleasures of all kinds. Passion and seductiveness. Amen. So when the word of God is not in your life, these are the things you do. You enjoy life and especially sexual pleasures of all kinds. There's no limitation in sexual pleasures. They indulge themselves in everything which is not good. And the Bible says that this is the greediness of them. Hallelujah. Oh. These things lead to all kind of impurity. Those who practice it, they are greedy. Praise the living God. So, you see, this is the life we were living before we were saved from them. Somebody wrote the, uh, wrote, uh, the last time that God has not saved us by grace to continue in sin. You understand? So, when you have been saved from all this lifestyle, how do you practice them again? You have to be conscious of yourself and the power of the grace in you to come out of them because the Spirit, or the Holy Spirit is always speaking to us. That is why to put on the new self created to be like God in true holiness and righteousness is also not to what? To uh, disobey the prompting of the Holy Spirit, not to quench the Holy Spirit's word speaking. When you close your ears on the word of power, how can you be transformed? Praise the living God. Okay. This is the condition of being satisfied the desires of the five senses. Anyone who does not obey the word of God give himself herself to the satisfying of the five senses. The eye will not stop watching uh, uh, anything that is uh, 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 prohibited. The eye will not stop watching barbaric things, evil things. The eye, the, the, the hands will not stop touching. Your tongues will not stop eating or smelling. You understand? You continue in the five senses just to satisfy it, but you will never be satisfied. That is the truth. Hallelujah. The verse 20. That, however, is not the way of life you learn. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that, in, that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former ways of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by a deceitful desires. Amen. When we were in the world, we don't know anything in the Bible. We don't know the word of God. The word of God that cancels that correct, that rebuke into all goodness and righteousness. We don't have it. And therefore, we were deceived by the practices that is practiced in the world. We were deceived because of what? The lust of the flesh. The desire to satisfy all the five senses. We were involved. We were so indulged in them. But when we came to Christ, we learned something in Christ. The newness of Christ. The power of Christ. Amen? And this has become ours. This has become ours. We are born new into the kingdom of Christ. We are born afresh. Amen? And therefore, the former things have passed away. Praise the living God. Amen. And one truth is that the former ways of life is still in us. Amen. The sinful nature is still in every believer. But the truth is that those uh, sinful nature 
does not have influence, mastering power over you to push you to engineer you to go and sin because you have the Holy Spirit and you have self control over those things. Amen. That is the truth. So, in your life, it doesn't mean that when you are a Christian, you will not germinate evil thought, that uh, wicked thought will not come into your mind. Adultery mind will not come to your mind. Fornication will not come to your mind. Stealing will not come to your mind. All and various thoughts will come to your mind. But because of the newness of life, you have self-control, which is given by great spirit. That is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So it's one of the evidence whether you are in Christ or not, whether you have the Holy Spirit or not, and how what measure of the spirit do you have? How responsive you are, you will see it by the obedience of the word of God. Praise the living God. Amen. So, how to be made new in the attitude of your mind? Praise the Lord. And to be made new in the attitude of your mind. Amen. Amen. Put your minds on things. Put your minds on heavenly things. This is the solution. How do you, a believer, who has the newness of Christ in your life, how do you escape? What is the solution? What is the solution to your life that you not live the former ways of things, the former uh, way of life? What is the solution? He said, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. Amen. How can you make new the attitude of your mind? You have to study yourself. When you were in the world, when I was in the world, the patterns of thinking, it's always enjoyment of all kinds. So this mindset, renew it now. And now, certify the desires of the spirit. Certify the desire of your God and your maker who has prepared a place for you in heaven. So with this mindset, you will seek things above the flesh. You will seek things above sexual pleasures. You will seek things above uh, harboring and loving the things of this world and by killing people and by extorting from people. You live above this thinking. This is making things new in your mind. The pattern of thinking has changed. Why? Because you have placed your mind on heavenly things. You have placed your mind in Christ because you have been resurrected with him and you are seated with him in his right hand side. So Christ is now living in his rightful position as God Almighty. So from that perspective, you change your mind concerning things of life. Amen. You begin to, uh, to work like Jesus Christ. You begin to do like Jesus Christ. You are praying for people healing. You are praying for people's prosperity. You are praying for people's soul. Uh, deliverance from evil spirit people deliverance from addictions so this is now your compassion because the bible says that jesus saw the conditions of the people had they were depressed and tormented and he had compassion upon them so you begin to think like jesus when you put your mind on heavenly things you begin to seek and to love people unconditionally. You will love them, they will hate you, you will help them, they insult you, but yet still, because your mind is placed in heaven, your mind is placed on Jesus, you continue in the goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is renewing our mind, putting our mind on heavenly things. You begin to tap into the, the, the privilege right in Christ to seek the 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 to seek the giftings of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Spirit of wisdom, spirit of power, uh, uh, word of knowledge, understanding, healing, power, faith, working of miracle, interpretation of tongues. So you raise your spiritual mind to Christ because that is where Christ is endorsing, operated in Christ. And that is your new nature to have the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of cancer and might, the spirit of obedience, the spirit of a higher reverence to God Almighty, the spirit to fear God and to obey Him. Not to fear Him because He kill you, but to fear Him because He's the creator of everything. Praise the living God, my brothers and sisters. Let us put on the new life, the new self. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. The word righteousness, you see, even evil people, 
Evil people, wicked people, devil, witches and wizards still do goodness to their own kind. So, for you, a believer, to be righteous is to also go beyond the normal doing what is right. What about when people are insulting you, abusing you, gossiping about you? Do you intend to do good to them? So, you must go beyond, beyond by loving your enemies. That is doing good like God because it's a God that is good for the good and for the bad. He still rain water on the, uh, the on the farm of the wicked people. The same water watered the good people. So you must think like that. When you begin to think like Christ, then you don't have limitation because in Christ Jesus there is no limitation, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. So your new self is your regenerated true nature in Christ Jesus. For for as many as that has been baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ, has clothed themselves with Jesus. So put on your new self to be renewed in knowledge in the image of Jesus Christ. Put on your new self to be clothed, to clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, goodness, humility, gentleness, patience. Hallelujah. To put on your new, your new self is to put on Christ Jesus. To operate in the heart, in the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Operate in the spirit of counsel and power. Operate in the spirit of knowledge and holy reverence to God Almighty. My brothers and sisters, the time has come that lukewarm Christianity will go down. And faithful obedience, uh, uh, power Christian will arise. This is the generation that will bring revival for the next generation. Because when this revival does not come... They will be lost more than us. Praise the living God. Therefore, we must stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ and put on Christ Jesus. Demonstrate Christ Jesus at every course of action. Amen. You, you, you go to places, you'll be prompted by the Holy Spirit to pray for somebody. Immediately you pray because at that prayer, you are bringing Christ on the stage. And whatever deliverance is necessary, the spirit of power manifests itself. Amen. So I am all the time listening, discerning. What is he saying? Is he saying anything about a, a, a situation? So you as a believer, you must think like that because Jesus says that he hears what the father says. It means that in the flesh, his own mindset before he became flesh, he still tuned into that mindset. He still tuned into his master mind. You understand? So we must also tune into the mastermind of Jesus Christ and operate in that level where Christ in us, bringing glory to people, setting people free. Why? Because that is our new self created to be like God in true righteousness. Wherever you are, there's no limitation. My brothers and sisters, the time has come. The time has come that we put on Christ. Amen. Put on Christ. Praise the living God. Let us read um, Colossians 3, verse 1. Verse 1 to 10. It says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at his rightful position as God Almighty. This is my addition. Amen. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Because when you are occupied with sexual things, this is what the body will do. So instead of putting your mind on those things, put your mind on uh, receiving the power of faith. Put your mind on the spirit of healing. Receiving it as a gift. So for when you search for it, you search for it, seek for it, for love's sake, it will be given unto you. Amen? So you begin to put your mind on heavenly things. For you died and you live and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Christ which is God. When Christ who is your life appeared, then you also will, will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature. My brothers and sisters, put to death whatever belongs to the earthly nature. Put to a stop 
what you were practicing in the world before you came to Christ, put a stop to it. Remove them like dirty garments. Why do we wear new clothes? Because the old one has, has torn. There's a hole in it. It's no more nice. It's no more decent. You cannot go with old clothes, torn clothes, smelling clothes into gathering. No, you disgrace yourself. And therefore, our old way of things, our old lifestyle is like a filthy rag, a filthy garment on us. We will put them, we will remove them like clothes, put them aside. Hallelujah. And this earthly nature, some of them, some of them are sexual immorality of all kinds. Sexual pleasures of all kinds. No limitation. This is not good. If you are like that, put a stop to it. Hallelujah. Impurity. Lust. Evil desires and greed. Which is idolatry. Amen. Putting everything before God. Putting your stomach before God. Putting your interest before God. All these things is what? Idolatry. Because, because of this, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in this way in the life of your the life you once lived. That is the truth. This life we all once lived this kind of life. But now you must also you must also rid yourself of all such things as this. Anger, praise the living God. Anger belongs to the former way of life. It belongs to the world. You want to show power, just get angry. You destroy things. So anger does not belong to your new self. So when you have evil anger in your life, pray for the spirit of power to erase it by the blood of Jesus Christ to take them out of your life. Malice, gossiping about people, slander, slander, a planning to hurt, amen, and filthy language from your lips, amen. On Sunday, when the word of God will come, this is where people will be writing on the social social media all pervert sexual things to what to corrupt the mind of people who read them. Stop that if your lifestyle is like that. Amen. You are not portraying the true newness of life in you. So we are learning. The word of God is there to cancel us, to correct us, to rebuke us into all heart, righteousness and holiness. So my brothers and sisters, let us learn. Let us learn. And it continues to say that do not lie to each other since you since you have taken off your old self with eight practices. So lying to one another belongs to the old patterns of life. So we shouldn't lie to one another and put on your new self, which is being renewed. Hallelujah. Put on your new self, which is being renewed in knowledge. So it is very, very good to have the knowledge of the word of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ and how things operate. The lay down principles, the lay down way and route and gate to enter into eternal kingdom. You must know it because it is good. Amen. In the image of each creator. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God. We are being in. We are being transformed daily, daily into the glory of Christ, into the image of Christ. You have to allow it. In fact, you have to allow it. I am not speaking like an angel. No. I am flesh and blood like you. The things you pass through are passed through. The things you have done, I have done them. But by grace, spirit, saved by grace from my former ways of life to the newness of Christ, to be set apart and walk in the known word of God. Hallelujah. The same applies to you. Amen. Saved by grace. Through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Set apart to walk in the newness of life that you have received. So this is very simple. My brothers and sisters. Be willing. That is the word. It is your will that you do. You did those things. So with the same will, you change your mindset from them and now you begin to respond to the word of God. And believe me, the power of the Holy Spirit will help you to obey the word of God, will prompt you when you don't know about anything. Amen? And it gives you also the, 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 the capacity, the ability, and the mentality of Christ to what? To subdue sin. To subdue the influence of the devil. He says that he has given us power and authority to, to subdue snakes, to subdue what? Scorpions and all the powers of the enemy who not harm us. 
So be mentally conscious of what Christ has said and live by that word. The word of power is your portion. My brothers and sisters, I brought this message to an end. Let us take in this message that we are putting on the new self created to be like uh, Christ Jesus in true holiness and righteousness. The Lord bless you even as you begin to obey, you begin to transform by the power of the Holy Spirit. God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me say a short prayer and then we continue on our Zoom platform. Amen. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, the Son of the living God, we give you praise. Jesus, God Almighty incarnate in the flesh, we give you praise. You became flesh and blood to know the weakness of human being, to know how we feel, how we fall and rise again, to know how we can desire, how we can be enslaved by the desires of this flesh. Jesus, you know all this. That is why I thank you as God Almighty in the flesh. For, now, for that reason, you give, you give us the power to subdue every other thing. Therefore, we I pray for all believers all over the world that my Lord, my God, let your prompting be energetic. Let your prompting be so powerful. Let your prompting be so uh, illuminating that our whole mind, soul, spirit, and body will respond to your voice, the voice of the word in us to live a holy and a righteous life. I thank you in Jesus' name. If somebody is buried, is addicted to the things of this world, Jesus, Son of the living God, Jesus, Word of God, Jesus, power of God, my Lord, my God, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, that person come out of addictions of sins in Jesus' name, especially sexual pleasures. My Lord, my God, there's nothing you cannot do. You say, woman, who is yet to condemn you? Nobody. And therefore, go and see no more. Believe this word that Christ has saved you from all your sins and all your weakness. And now, go in the power of the Holy Spirit and sin no more. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I bless your soul. I bless your spirit. I bless your mind. I bless your hand works. I bless your food. I bless your water. I bless your going out and I bless your coming in. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord cause his favor to shine upon you. May the Lord protect you from all arrows of the day of the night. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord expand your territory according to the prayers of Jabez. O oh God of our fathers, the God of Israel, Jesus God Almighty, Jesus I am that I am. Jesus Yahweh, bless your handwork and expand your business, expand your territory and answer you according to his grace, according to his compassion. All your heart desires be fulfilled in Jesus' mighty name. As you sought to delight in the word of God, may God meet you, may God engage you and certify you with good tidings now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise for an answer prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. God richly bless you. My dear sister uh, Seth and son, Abba Bio, God richly bless you. Uh, sister Kafri Angela, God richly bless you. Hallelujah. My dear first lady, God richly bless you. Mawaga, Mawaga, Mawuneira, Mawuneira, God richly bless you. Henrich, Desi, Louis. A uh, God richly bless you. Oh, wonderful people of God. God richly bless you for sharing. You are doing a great job. God Almighty richly bless you. This is how we do it. Amen. One priest you share, you have preached. We all have the same glory. God Almighty richly bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday, a glorious Sunday, and may your heart be at peace with yourself. In everything you do, the Lord will see you through now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll see you next week Saturday. Shalom.